In my last video where I answered questions given to me by subscribers, I talked about my sewing goal for 2024 was to get into some more historical sewing. And that does not mean I'm going to be the next Bernadette Banner. It means I'm going to do historical sewing in my own way. And so I was thrilled when I seen this sewing pattern with this woman on the front and was very intrigued of the history of who she is and how she came to be on this sewing pattern envelope. So that's what we're doing today. We're getting into some history and getting into some sewing with this beautiful fabric. I'm very excited to begin my journey. I do have a lot of projects on the way that are more historical, some vintage things as well. So if you haven't already, subscribe and let's get into it. So I reviewed the pattern envelope as well as the instructions thoroughly before I got started. I found that this advanced sewing pattern, 7011, was copyrighted in the 1950s and manufactured by the Puritan Dress Company, which was formed in 1909 by the Rosen family. In the 1940s through the 1960s, they made licensed copies of European designers. So this one was actually designed by Gloria Swanson. That is the woman who is on the pattern envelope. And you can see by this pattern being unprinted that it is definitely an older one. And if you've been here before, you know that I am terrified of these, but I've been sewing them a lot more lately and I'm starting to learn what all of the preparations mean and they are becoming easier for me to manage. So that's exciting. So as I get into the cutting of the fabric, let's get into the history of Ms. Gloria Swanson, a 1920s starlet. In 1951, Gloria Swanson, the silent screen star, added clothing designer to her repertoire of professions and worked with the company. Her label, Forever Young, a play on both her own indestructible looks and the desire of older women to look younger, was manufactured by the Puritan Dress Company between 1951 and 1981. Swanson traveled to stores across the country making personal appearances to promote her line and to narrate fashion shows featuring it. When this pattern arrived, I had never heard of Gloria, and I thought to do some more research on this woman whose face is on the cover of my sewing pattern. So digging into what I could find on Miss Gloria, I found that she stood 4 feet 11 but gained a couple of inches by wearing heels. She had a regal air about her and spoke distinctly, enunciating every syllable. By some accounts, she was a breathtaking beauty with brown hair, blue eyes, red lips, arch eyebrows, and a beauty mark on her chin, and a dazzling smile. Gloria was born in Chicago on March 27, 1899, and like me, she was raised in a military family. They moved from base to base, living in two of my favorite places on earth, Key West and Puerto Rico. I have spent a few wedding anniversaries in the former and my honeymoon on the latter. Okay, quick break. If you come here a lot, you know that I often use these videos as a sort of diary time capsule of sort for my kids to come back and reference or my husband if he comes here to get a hint that I would like to go back to either Key West or Puerto Rico very soon. So that's where these photos are from. Okay, I had to. I just had to. Sorry, honey. <laughs> to see that is so funny, but let's get back to Miss Swanson. She was an American actress whose first achieved fame acting in dozens of silent films in the 1920s and was nominated three times for the Academy Award for Best Actress, most famously for her 1950 turn in Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard, which also earned her a Golden Globe Award. At the height of her career in the 1920s, her every move was followed and reported on in a way I find similar to the actresses of today. I found that concept to be very interesting. She was a fashion girl and was expected to be seen in the latest fashions and it is said she never disappointed, which led to her creating her own fashions and I assume this is how we got here with me sewing up this pattern. Gloria Swanson is what we would call the it girl of the 1920s. She was a fashionista strutting around Hollywood in shoes from Italy and clothes from Paris. Now granted, she was stylish and enjoyed fashion, but she was actually contractually obligated by the studio to wear only the latest, most fashionable clothing at her own expense. 
though I hardly doubt she needed this incentive. By the 1920s, she was the highest paid actress living an extraordinary and extravagant celebrity lifestyle. It is reported that in the 20s, she made and spent over $8 million. I have no idea what that is in today's currency or adjusted for inflation, as they say. She soon found herself in $500,000 in debt, and this is where it gets even more gossipy, if that is a word. In 1927, she began an affair with a certain future president's father that she brought in to manage her finances. Kennedy Patriarch, Hollywood mogul, head of the Securities Exchange Commission, and alleged bootlegger, Joe Kennedy. Allegedly, he left her worse off by scamming her out of a lot of money by setting up a production company that he then used to pay for everything, including the gifts he gave to her. During their affair, which is said to have lasted three and a half years, he profited millions and had tripled her debt to $1.5 million. I will say, while researching her, I found her to be quite fascinating and accomplished so many accomplishments, but there was such a focus on her affairs, and I really just didn't care for that, though they were a plenty. I will not go into all of them, but there are a lot, including one to a French Marquise, thus making her America's first member of nobility. She even married a man before being divorced from her previous husband. And there is a word for that. Um, I'm drawing a blank on it. If you think of it, leave it in the comments. But we cannot leave it there. I do not want to diminish this woman or take away from her many accomplishments. She was an inventor and held several patents. During her company's existence, Swanson and her team developed a carbide steel alloy cutting tool and developed the first plastic buttons for clothing. You can go ahead and fact check me on that because I'm standing on it. And according to one source, it was Swanson's company that we also owe the invention of the extension cord. I don't know how confident I am in that statement, so feel free to fact check it as well. I found that what all the critics could agree on was that this woman lived an amazing and accomplished life. In her peak, she had only one female rival, Mary Pickford, and her salary from Paramount in 1925 was $7,000 a week. That's close to $99,000 in adjusted for inflation amounts. <laughs> Before Sunset Boulevard, she had made more than 40 feature films with co-stars ranging from Rudolph Valentino to Lawrence Oliver. She was the first Hollywood actress to produce and star in a picture in Europe, and she was even honored by the United Nations for a postage stamp she designed to commemorate the United Nations Decade for Women. This woman was accomplished. In 1982, a year before her death, Swanson sold her archives of over 600 boxes for an undisclosed sum, including photographs, artworks, copies of films, and private papers, including correspondence, contracts, and financial dealings to the Harry Ransom Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Upon her death in 1983, much of the remainder of her holdings were purchased by UT Austin at an auction held at the Doyle New York Gallery. An undisclosed amount of memorabilia was also gifted to the HRC Center between 1983 and 1988. In 1989, the Library of Congress chose Sunset Boulevard along with 24 other films to be preserved in the permanent collection of the National Film Registry of the Library of Congress as culturally, historically, and aesthetically important. I found it so interesting that a person like myself who really loves history and I'm getting more into film and such, I had not heard of Gloria Swanson before I began this project. Now, once I was doing my research on her, I did find that her photographs looked very familiar. So I had seen her face plenty of times, but I didn't know of her works in the film industry as well as her many other accomplishments. If you knew of Gloria Swanson, or even if you didn't, I would love to hear about that. If you have any facts or interesting information that I have not included in this, 
I would love to hear about that as well. So please feel free to leave it in the comments. It would be a, a great help as I am now counted as one of her many fans. As you can see, the dress is coming along quite nicely. Here I am pinking the seams of the skirt. What made this project take a little bit longer was the fact that all of the pieces had to be flat lined and I took the time to do it by hand. The first piece that I tried with the machine, the fabric shifts so much I thought to take the time and the care to do it by hand and do a lot of the finishing work by hand. I did set this project down for a while before I came back to it because this bodice was so tricky. Looking at the envelope, it looked pretty simple, but I wasn't taking into account the details that are included in this dress. And I will give you some close-up shots of these details a little bit later. But this bodice was very, very tricky with how it sits up on the neck. And that is a design feature that makes it special, but I was just a little bit confused with figuring it all out. And so I did set this down for a while before I came back to it. It is about here where things finally started to make a little bit more sense with the facing and getting the top yoke of the bodice attached before I could attach the bottom. And I did a lot of basting by hand and really just took my time with this bodice because it was unlike anything I've ever sewn before. I am really happy with how it turned out um, and my first time using such a fabric and really just taking my time and doing a lot of basting work and hand stitching. Um, the fabric was just so delicate and prone to shifting, but it does have that all in one sleeve that I am not a fan of. And it took the project before this one before I realized that. So though I do love this dress, I cannot see me sewing many other things like this. I am starting to pay more attention to what it is I'm sewing before I start sewing it. And I am still in that process of figuring out my personal style and figuring out what I like and what I don't like and what looks good on my body and what doesn't. I do not like the all-in-one sleeve, though it is a staple on a lot of vintage dresses. I do not like the way it looks on me. I don't like sewing it. I just don't like it. I would love to hear your thoughts on the sleeve being attached to the bodice or the all-in-one sleeve, or if you know the proper term for what it's called, but I would love to hear about that and I would also like to hear what design features do you like or not like and what do you think is flattering and what do you think isn't. All of those things are I'm taking into account as I move into 2024 sewing things that I really like and that I'm really going to actually wear. I would also like to hear your thoughts on this style of video. I am, this is something very new to me, but some, a process that I enjoyed. I think trying to figure out all what to include and what not to include. I found so much on Gloria Swanson, but of course wanted to keep the video sh shorter and a little bit more cohesive, but there was just so much that I found on this woman that I didn't really know how to share it all. I also found that her performance as Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard is ranked number 31 on Premiere Magazine's 100 Greatest Movie Characters of All Time. I have not seen Sunset Boulevard, but now I'm very interested in seeing it. If you have seen it, let me know where I could find it or what you thought of it. Most of the critics agree that it's a really great film, so I would love to hear what other people thought of the film. I myself am excited to see it. If you just noticed that, these buttons are actually true vintage buttons that I've been saving all of my true vintage finds for really special projects. And so I thought it was quite fitting to use a true vintage button on this dress. And here I am getting the zipper basted in by hand. And this dress is getting close to complete. It just needs a hem. And I am going to show you some close-up shots of the design features especially the darts in the back and the neckline that I thought were really important for making this dress look and fit the way that it does. Also, I could not find a whole lot on the company that produced this vintage sewing pattern. So if you have any information or resources you could provide regarding the Puritan Dress Company or the Rosen family, that would be awesome as well. I didn't do a super in-depth 
investigation and this was my first video of this sort so I am very interested in doing more historical sewing videos like this if you guys have anyone you would like to see me research or recreate a dress that they've worn or anything like that then please feel free to share that as well so here's this beautiful dress these are the darts at the back that I feel really pull the dress in and the neckline is really interesting. I don't know how great of a job that I did with it, but I did it the best way that I could to get it completed. I definitely think that was supposed to be a little bit more centered. There's the all-in-one sleeve that I just do not find to be that flattering on me, but those darts at the shoulders really help pull it in at the neckline. And this this form of collar, the way that it sits, is very flattering, I believe, on just about everybody. So I'm going to go try it on and I'll give you some final photos. This is actually my first time putting her on finished. And I'm not sure just yet what I think. We'll get into that in just a second. I will say my hair did come out really, really cute this day. So I'm happy with that. I do love the fabric. I love this neckline. I just, it's, it's the fit. Go ahead and tear me apart in the comments. I know you're going to. Maybe it isn't as bad as I think it is. I think I really like the gold shoes with it. Is it as bad as I think it is? Please tell me it's not. Let me know what you think. I'll tell you what I think. It just, it's just not flattering, but I have lost so much weight and so I need to learn how. It took me a whole year to learn to sew from my previous size and now I'm a new size and I have to learn to sew for it. And I'm also still in the process of losing weight. So I'll start a project that fits and then by the end it doesn't. If you have any idea on what kind of alterations I would need to make to this to make it more flattering, please feel free to let me know. My, my feelings will not be hurt. Please give me all the insight. This is just, I'm proud of the work that I did on it. I'm proud of my craft improving. The fit is just awful and it's just not flattering. I just really don't like these all-in-one sleeves. I love this shape of this neckline, but it's just, it's too big. I don't know how to go about making it fit properly I just I don't I yeah so it was fun I hope you enjoyed it week or so out of my life I won't get back but the process was fun the journey was definitely fun we didn't end up where I thought we were going but what are you gonna do I'll see you in the next one that is soon and sure to come